Hi, I'm Bill. I'm Patrick. I'm Anruk. And if this is the first time dropping into an Astro Chat, welcome. And the purpose of the Astro Chat is really just to get um, more visibility about what's happening with other imagers. And uh, in this case, we're very fortunate to have Anurag, who's uh, coming to us from the other side of the world, uh, 12 and a half hours uh, or later or earlier than uh, where we're at here. Um, and again, part of this series is just about sharing knowledge, bringing more perspective to the channel than I can uh, or even Patrick can. So we're looking for further guest speakers to come in, share their story, uh, share a topic, uh, let us know maybe a little bit about their journey, where they're at right now. So I'll put an email address, Astro Chatter. Uh, I forgot the email address. <laughs> so I will put an email address in this video somewhere. And if you'd like to be involved, uh, please join. As you can tell, it's a very casual approach. It's a relaxed mode. And so you shouldn't be uh, intimid or intimidated or anything. Just uh, come on with us and, and have, uh, have a good conversation. All right, uh, Anurag, I've kind of messed the opening up and everything, so I'm sure you're going to do a much better uh, job than me. So if you just share a little bit about uh, who you are, uh, yeah. where you're from, and then just kind of go into your presentation, uh, uh, that would be great. Yeah, so hello, hello everyone. Hello, uh, Bill. Hello, Patrick. And I've been a fan of you guys, and I'm watching your channel since uh, so many days uh, now regularly. And it's, it's my honor to be here and present uh, and actually able to talk to you guys about uh, our favorite hobby, which is astrophotography. So uh, I, I've been sharing uh, whatever, like, I, basically, I'm going to introduce myself, first of all. So basically, I'm Anurag Vasnik, and I'm from India. And I live uh, in Mumbai, which is like a capital city in Maharashtra. Uh, that is also my work city. And my hometown is Gondia which is another town in Maharashtra only, which is like 1,000 kilometers away from my workplace. So I do mostly my astro imaging from my hometown only. So whenever I take leaves from my work, I go to straight to my hometown and uh, do my astrophotography from there. So uh, I'm going to present my screen. Let me know when I'm visible, guys. And maybe you'll cover this, but what is the Bortle scale? uh in your hometown i imagine it's darker than mumbai of course yes yeah. yes so my main goal of uh, going there and imaging is like the bottle scale only but where i live is not so great exactly so it's just 100 meters from my house uh we have a railway track so train goes like every 10 five minutes 10 minutes so oh, whenever wow. i'm imaging so my uh, entire house shakes so imagine the effect of it on the stars Oh wow! But still, but still, I'm like lucky to get like little, yeah, round stars only. So which is like a great thing to do from me, even from my house. And when I travel a little bit far from my house, like ten kilometers or five kilometers, at the the actual magic then starts to happen. So as soon as I move a little bit forward from my house, uh, along with my gear, so I do get like decent bottle scale, like three or two point five maybe. So yeah, I'm pretty much happy with that. And even if I travel here in Mumbai, I don't get such quality of sky. So I prefer to go to my hometown and do imaging. So let me know when I'm visible, guys. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you there? We go. There it goes. Yeah. Oh. So uh, yeah, my agenda for tonight. Uh, and for you guys, morning for me is tonight. Uh, would be talking <laughs> about these four topics which I mentioned, like what is like to do astrophotography from India. Uh, second would be the struggle of acquiring the gear in India and its pricing. And the third would be my astrophotography journey, which I started back in 2018, not so long, but yeah, it's been just four years. And a uh, little bit my insight about how do we collect good data set and uh, how to process an image. So I'm not going to go in depth on image processing. I'll be just giving a short introduction about it. But for image processing, we can like I plan to cover it on the next 
presentation which i make later after this one so not today of course but yeah in future sometime so yeah so this is about me uh, i am anurag vasting as i mentioned you guys earlier that i have been born in gondia is a small town in maharashtra and i'm currently working as a production coordinator at ubisoft i am a gamer and i love to play games so my passion was to like work in a gaming industry so which i got uh, and now since my passion uh, converted that into astrophotography so instead of gaming in my free time i do astro imaging and uh, i apologize guys if i go a little fast or slow uh, let me know you guys can interrupt me whenever you have any questions okay mm -hmm. so yeah so we'll start with my first topic that is like what it is like to do astrophotography from india and i want to show you guys the light pollution map of india oh yeah so we see that a uh, very few places in india have uh, dark skies apart from that where i live and everywhere else is like light pollution bozanga so everywhere you go everywhere you see in india like mostly uh, you will find a lots of air uh, light, air pollution as well as light pollution not just light so both in india you cannot you just not dealing with light pollution you are also dealing with the air, uh, air pollution so uh, to uh tell you more about air pollution it gets combined with the fog early in the morning or like or at the start of the evening and the entire sky becomes hazy like you cannot even see apart from any bright objects bright stars on the sky which you can point out okay that's orion constellation that's uh, polaris polaris is like myth you cannot see it from city skies oh yeah so uh this is where i live so this is uh, where i tagged the location that is my hometown near nearby only and uh, that is a bottle scale of it so i live at bottle scale 5 uh, 6 approximate that is my hometown and uh, near to my house is a railway station uh, so which gets me entire new level of light pollution so it is like hard for me to even image uh, anything that is rising from the east Uh, until unless it is like way up in the sky where the light pollution kind of is minimal so i plan most of my imaging time accordingly so here you can see the image of my house uh, my rooftop uh, and the light pollution how much i get and so that's my rig where i keep it and uh, that's the view of the sky uh, over and constellation you guys can see it is faint but yeah that is there Wow, so imaging from your roof, you really get yeah. a lot of vibration. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, that is the main problem. So, even I have my RC telescope. Uh, so, even if in live view, whenever the train goes my like a star cannot be stable like it goes here and there. So, my oh, yeah. I, it is very hard for me to get pinpoint stars in my images. But yeah, I, like I try my best to still do it. And uh talking more about uh the light pollution and the consequences of it uh, another thing is like awareness of uh, astrophotography and light pollution to like indian indian people so no one is aware about what astrophotography is uh, on the mass population i mean india is now the world's highest population country and we have beaten china in that so imagine number of people here and it is india is also like seventh largest country in the world and it comes with a way variety of uh, regions all over india as well as the weather of it so to basically image uh, from india uh, you you get a very small window so few months in the winters uh, we do have like three seasons only here in india so one would be summer second would be rainy season which we call it monsoon and the third is winter season so winter and the start of summer are very best time for us to image and uh, after that when the monsoon is arriving so a month before and a, like several months after you cannot image at all because your sky is very light polluted uh, not uh, not light polluted but uh, full with clouds and uh, haze 
so you need to actually you have to wait for like some good really really good nights with a good seeing at good transparency to start imaging so now uh, since like in india like only one place in india we have which is a dark sky reserve here you can see at the extreme north of india we have a place called lela dark and hanley so hanley has been appointed as a the first dark sky reserve of india hmm. and uh, i believe it should not be first and last but yeah we plan not uh, the indian community plan astrophotography community plans to like increase that horizon and make more places than in india to image actually like whenever anyone if anyone wants to see and witness the beauty of bottle one how the bottle one sky look like so we have to travel all the way from anywhere in india to north of india here wow. so yeah so it first of all it is uh, time consuming as well as like uh, it takes a bit of time because the, from from my house till the that bottle one sky scale uh, site it it is like more than 1500 kilometers easily so oh, that wow. yeah that is like one we yeah, are 1.2k miles or 1k miles approximate right yeah so uh, so it is not feasible every time uh, for anyone to go there and image until and unless if someone is living very near to it still it is like a very hostile area and uh, it is like weather wise is also it is very extreme the temperatures go there from 0 uh, degrees to minus 20 minus 40 sometimes wow. and the rest of the india is like a tropical as we are a tropical country so here the weather is like uh, very hot so uh, where i live my temperature goes up to 46 to 48 degrees celsius in the summers wow so yeah so imagine uh, imaging what the temperature yeah. of my single sub would be when i'm imaging from that with a dslr not a cool camera so i even shot some of my images in when my temperature of my sensor is 46 degree to 48 degrees so i'll show you guys like what i was able to achieve even with that temperature okay so i shot i shot for like uh, 15 16 hours to like at least get a good result out of it because the noise levels were like horribly bad and extreme but i still i wanted to do something so yeah i just give it and go and try it so uh, as soon as the monsoon arrives uh, it is a like very long time uh, it lasts for minimum of four months so and it starts from june month of june and it uh, goes away till uh, november sometimes and sometimes it stays back up till uh, until december so it is like a very long time where we have to just wait sit back and relax <laughs> and wait for like uh, sky to get clear so we can start imaging so another uh, topic i would like to discuss is uh, the struggle of acquiring gear and its cost in india so uh, so this is the image which i wanted to show you guys that is taken by my friend vikas sundar and that is from hanley which is a bottle one site oh that's and a, that, that is uh, yeah that's a big mirror how big is that mirror yeah that is like our indian government uh, sponsored observatory I, i do not know the specs of this ah. specific mirror but it looks like 1.5 meter to me and this is the indian astronomical observatory where it is located in hanley and this image was shot by my another friend Do- dorje ench that's a beautiful image yeah, oh, yeah so so this is the like sky we get from bottle one i have not seen it uh in my entire life i've never been to a bottle one zone but i have been to bottle two where my house near it so i i believe like i have to even have if i have to trade off one bottle scale that is fine i'm happy with two or three <laughs> uh mm-hmm. but yeah going there and imaging i want to do it some day but uh, that will be soon i believe so uh, coming back to this topic the struggle of acquiring gear and in, uh and its cost in india so basically uh, as you guys know that uh, we do not have any major retailers or major resellers here in india so at the very start of my imaging when i started to do astrophotography so i used to rent stuff 
I did not buy anything. So I used to rent a DSLR. I used to rent a lens along with that. And I would take that along with my tripod, which I bought from Amazon. I would take that to any dark location from my work and uh, start uh, imaging with a five, 500 second rule. So I would be happy with uh, 15, 16 images of Milky Way with uh, a five second of exposure that, that would make it something around five minutes or three, four minutes. Even I was happy with that. So later, uh, as the time pass on, I have I had my like in India since I told you guys that no, we don't have any good retailer or any good reseller which provides the astronomical gear by that time. But there were some friends of mine which were doing astrophotography. So I inquired about uh, the gear which they were using, and they mentioned that okay, these guys bought from this place. So most of the gear which comes in India is uh, carried by their friends from abroad. So if I have a friend in US, I'll tell him, uh, I need a camera, I need a telescope. Can you bring it in India for me? So they would do it. They would buy even my filters and my camera, which I bought ASI, uh, ASI 294 MC Pro. That everything I bought, purchased from US only. And my friend carried that here in India. Mm. Uh, from For now, like there are so many other retailers which started doing a business here in India. So, but pricing wise, it is very uh, horrible. Let's say 294 cost around like 1K USD, right? 999 uh, dollars in US. But the price of that here in India would be, uh, just give me a second. I'm just converting. So the retailers just not ship to India? They, uh, now they start a shipping but due to the customs and the other prices, oh, I have. If someone right. wants to buy, they'll have to pay hundred and uh, fourteen hundred and fifty dollars for uh, uh, one point two uh, one dollar one thousand dollar camera wow. for a one thousand dollar camera. So it's like yeah. four hundred and fifty dollars more. So imagine like paying that much extra cost just to buy right. from India. It Man, doesn't make sense crazy. to me. Yeah. So yeah. few people who started doing it are uh, selling gear here, but I hardly buy from them just because of these con currency conversions. I would rather wait for a few months and time and get the gear from any of my friends who are working anywhere else in the world than buying it from India. Until unless that uh, product is cheap uh, which I, and very mandatory, so I don't have to wait and I, I just need that to get it get going. So recently I purchased ASI Air like, like that. So I didn't wait for like anyone to come here, but I wanted it so bad. So I just purchased. So that is another thing. So, uh, so for, in India now that scene is growing that more, many people are getting into astrophotography and, uh, gears and everything is ZW started selling their products in India, not uh, via retailers only. So we are now getting like good exposure of equipments. Like many brands are still not available in India. So a sky watcher is available in India, but their pricing is very exorbitant. Mm -hmm. So that might be a business that, opportunity to, uh, yeah, exactly. Kind of get in it contact with some of these big companies. Exactly. So that, that is a massive business opportunity for uh, everyone out here actually. So if someone is uh, opening a full fledged telescope shop and he's keeping that stock, not like he's asking people to pre-order that stuff and then he'll order it and then he'll get down in India and people have to wait for like few months or like a week wow. or even for a few weeks. That is, uh, that is what people are doing right now here in India or rather so they like, uh, tell us that okay this product we they're gonna order in bulk as they are the resellers so we'll have to place pre-orders with them or just say that mm -hmm. okay i'll be needing that product and uh, they get that accordingly it's amazing Man. it's amazing what a person passionate about a hobby will do and 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 the challenges they're willing to deal with to enjoy uh, the hobby, you know, and I am never gonna 
I'm never going to complain about the weather again because we don't have a monsoon season. So <laughs> right. uh, I'm going to I'm going to stop my whining. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about my journey uh, so i was uh, sitting at my office uh, that is year was around 2008 and uh, i was looking for new hobby to start and i was very passionate and uh, very interested on space as a topic only as astronomy as a topic and i've been following james webb's launch before it was launched uh, since like so many days since 2012 i was tracking that okay new telescope is going to launch at that time i didn't know that is it is possible for us to, to even take images from earth <laughs> so that was like very new concept to me and the moment i found out okay this is possible so i jumped into that wagon and like i started doing my astrophotography so uh, that is how i started uh, so first of all i purchased uh, star adventure which is a mm. small tracker made by uh, skywatcher so i purchased it from amazon which was imported all the way from usa so i had to wait again two weeks to get it here in india or uh, once it arrived i have to pay the customs of it so it so i purchased that i was pretty much happy with the tracker and uh, then my next step would be to get a camera a decent camera so i purchased canon 1100d the canon crop body of it then i started like imaging uh, basic uh, images like i started pds and i started orion uh, and stuff like that so later as the more i imaged uh, more i got into the imaging so it showed me that okay we also have astronomy cameras uh, which get you like more hydrogen alpha data so i started with that so i figured okay people need to modify their dslrs in order to get more sensitivity in hydrogen hydrogen alpha channels but how was that feeling when you saw the that, first image show up on the screen yeah the the moment i saw i was like it was unbelievable for me so that was the first shot which i took so this is the first pleadies image which i shot i'm going to show you so this is it Mm. so i shot it like uh, with a modified camera not non modified camera not a modified one non modified camera mm -hmm. and uh, i did not track it way too long for way too long i was happy with 30 second exposures and i took it like for 30 minutes so i didn't know like okay how long you can expose so it's pretty right. much new by that time and i was exploring i was learning polar alignment so because since i get very limited time because i have a day job uh which is not in my city which for which i have to travel again 1000 kilometers away from my house to wow. work <laughs> then save money like that come back home do imaging so that was like my cycle was for every 2 3 months i used wow. to go to my house and image so that is how i started then later once i found out okay modifying camera makes your uh, sensor more sensitive to hydrogen alpha light so i am modified that camera sensor by myself at my house uh with the uh, youtube whatever information available on youtube so uh, i got it right i i was pretty much happy the moment i modified it and the first image i shot from a modified camera was this uh, the m31 nice. the andromeda nice so image. it turned out pretty pretty well for me and i was able to do a non guided uh shots with a 300 mm lens which i purchased so i was able to even go till 120 20 seconds for the shot and uh, 5 second shots or 30 second shots for the core of andromeda mm -hmm. so, so that is how i got this image and it i like posted that into reddit uh, as well it was very well received by the people fellow redditors so i was like overjoyed by myself ki like okay that is how the scale of this thing is and uh, how tiny we are and how <laughs> big the galaxies and the entire like big story how how what you can do with a modified camera so then like by that time uh, all the gear we used to purchase uh, is from coming from aliexpress which is a chinese uh, website or application from where you can buy good quality of hardware which is not available in india so in after some time like year 2020 
Indian government banned all the Chinese websites, even mm. the TikTok, everything. So we had uh, some dispute with China on the border. So due to that and retaliation, uh, Indian government banned everything. So that we appreciate, but it somehow hurt to us astronomy uh, enthusiasts like me uh, and people who are doing astrophotography from here. So that was a bit of a setback, but that opened up another opportunity. Like then I started looking for the gear outside India. So uh, the after modification of camera, I purchased uh, hydrogen hydrogen alpha filter, which is a seven nanometer filter, which I purchased from SV Boni. That is, uh, and the first image I shot with that was this North American nebula, when when I was like pretty new with the processing, and I took RGB data as well as uh, some narrowband data from hydrogen alpha, and then combined it and Pexinsight, and got this result. Still then, like I was pretty much new with my image processing. Then I like more I studied about the hardware. Uh, I got to know okay, but there are better sensors out there, and uh, you can image uh, even with that better sensors. So I, I started looking for a used camera. Then I purchased a used Canon 700D, and then I of course modified it. And the first light of my that camera mm -hmm. was this. Which I'll show you, please. This is the M40, which, uh, M30, uh, M42, sorry. Nice. For and, and the running nebula, which I shot with that. Uh, nice. Then, like, to track my progress, like, how the camera behaves, how my older camera was, and how this new camera is. So, this is uh, taken with a 1100D, which I modified. And uh, this is the Rosette nebula, which I shot from my house only. Wow back then and uh, just to track my progress then later on i shot the same image with my another new camera uh, which was 700d so the results were so different and uh, i oh, was yeah. pretty pretty much happy with it so <clears throat> that's how like i track my progress imaging something and imaging that same object after a few years and seeing like where you progress so it gives me like immense joy to us uh, as as photographers okay we are doing something we and we are on the right path of course, it is slow because uh, if you consider all the aspects of uh, life, the work, a day job, as well as another yeah. thing, and uh, traveling back and forth, so my imaging time is very much limited. And the, that, and the later on, with that same DSLR, the image I'm very proud of uh, would be this one, the Hossard and Flame Nebula, which I shot. Nice. This is from Altair Quadband Astro uh, filter, which I purchased from Altair Astro. My friend bought it here in India for me. Uh, he was living in UK studying his education, his master's. So I, I told him, okay, okay, bro, since you are living in UK, please get this filter for me. And he did. And as a result, I, I got this image with that uh, filter. Do you recall what your pixel size was on this uh, on this camera? And in, in this camera, I believe the pixels uh, pixel size was four point five approx. Oh, okay. Not sure, like, not exactly that, but it was in the ballpark of uh, four. And it was a APS-C. Yeah, it was yeah. an APS-C sensor, Can Canon EUS seven hundred D, which is also known in US as Kiss X seven I, which, okay. uh, yeah. So uh, the mount which I used for this was a GoTo mount, which I purchased from my friend. It was a used mount which he bought back in 2010 and I, it is a very old mount Oran series EQG and uh, I purchased from him uh, in 2020 year 2020 so even that mount was uh, very much old approx like 10 11 years old I was able to like uh, initially I wasn't getting round stars so I didn't know how the mount functions and all then I got to know okay there is a little slight backlash which is introduced in the deck as well as RA. So I was able to do some digging in cloudy nights uh, that why I am get, not getting good tracking and good stars. So from there, I got to know, okay, by uh, you, I need to adjust, I need to open up my mount and I need to like uh, calibrate all the internal gears accordingly, uh, fine tune it, not so tight, not so loose, just a fine balance where I eliminate yep. that backlash. Yeah. So another key which I found for taking good 
amount of exposures uh, was auto guiding and the polar alignment of course so i used uh, phd tools default polar alignment method there is a polar drift alignment method in uh, phd2 where oh, yeah. where i need to like just uh, put my mount in home position then whatever i see in my field of view is i just click on start so after doing that uh, it just get me uh, the amount of error i have in my images uh, how off i am with the polaris and uh, with that fine tuning i was able to get like pretty decent polar alignment of uh, 0.5 to like 0.7 absolutely so that was like pretty much good to take even long exposures so i had to how i improvise with my train setup like whenever the train is moving and whenever i am imaging so i used to keep like short guide exposures uh, 1.5 to 2 seconds so with that whenever even when the train is going my mount is working very hard to keep a star on track if i uh, to beat seeing everyone uh, like you guys know that we need to Uh, increase our guide exposures by like three seconds or four seconds to just to be seeing and to calculate that minimal star position and movement uh, so that you get uh, you beat the seeing and you get the pinpoint stars. So that right. was not a luxury for me, and I had to compromise that with uh, this short exposures. So nowadays, like I see that so many harmonic drive mounts are out there. and uh, those remounts require only short exposure length so my later plan would be to get one of those mount uh, and like uh, put up my rc on that and image so i haven't used rc on my 8 inch rc as much i i bought a, a refractor which i used for this image uh, it was a shark star one 71 sdq f6.3 quadruple so i don't need uh, any uh, focal reducer or any field flattener of with the scope i just need a uh, t te- uh, tearing adapter and i just hook into my dslr and i'm good to go hmm. so later on in journey uh, i purchased a uh, 294 mc pro and uh, this is the first light of that image of that camera uh, which is shot uh, over 15 hours So this is the lowest nebula, which is there in Orion. I didn't know that this kind of object exists in Orion constellation, and it is not imaged that much, as far as I know. So right. I thought, okay, this would be a good target for the first light image. And regarding that, the image I told you guys about that, I shot this image with forty to forty-eight degrees Celsius temperatures of a sensor. So this was the result of fifteen uh, hours data. Wow. Oh. it is bit noisy little bit noisy but yeah it is still like i was happy with it even though the summer was there and i was able to image uh, i imagine you're going to go into how you process some of these uh, image images yeah okay yeah so uh, i i would be i, I do not have pixel set installed in my this pc uh, and i do have it on my home pc so whenever i go home to image i just use uh, my home pc to do processing so uh, i would be liking to keep the processing image processing uh, for the next uh, time but i can like talk about the okay. workflows which i used and some insights afterwards so for any of the image i use pixel sight uh, for uh, stacking and for Im- image processing sometimes i use dss uh, just to stack and see So I what I usually do is I stack my images images on both of the softwares Pixel Sight as well as a DSS and I see the stack final stack and which gives me better result uh, on a stack so I go with that one whether it is from DSS or Pixel Sight doesn't matter so I I'll just go with the image which is which I feel is better for me to process which have less gradients and all so I go with that so uh, basically I start with uh, dynamic crop process and i crop out the edges uh, whatever edges are there if i have any artifacts i just crop them out uh moving forward from that would be dynamic background extraction 
and i do that dynamic background extraction depending on the image where where, where the gradient is i put my sample points where there are more gradients to eliminate that i do not put as many sample points on the area which is very clean for me uh where is snr is high so like that i do db and of course i change some values in pixel set like increasing tolerance from which is which is 0.5 in db so i increase it from 0.5 to like let's say 2 or 3 depending on the gradients i have so that is how is like do my db after db then i do noise reduction on the linear images so i use uh, i'm a fan of tgbd noise so there is a john rista method uh, available out there uh, made by john rista for noise reduction mm. so i find that method like very amazing uh, which gives me better results uh, with my uh, images so i do that noise reduction and then after that i do mmc so multi scale median transformation so after, uh, with that uh, i do next noise reduction steps on linear image after that is done i like stretch that image and with a uh, with arc sense stretch to like get the star colors and then mm-hmm. do the another step of pro- stretching via histogram transformation so with that i like do that and then i move to adjusting the curves of the image and then the other processes like H, uh, hdr mt and well, as well as like a reduction of star size and playing with the curves uh, ex- ma- making a mask making the image starless and then uh, playing along with the like object whatever objects i have uh, if i do have some artifacts i'll just remove them in a starless starless image with clone stamp and then i, I add them back together with uh, pixel math and then do final few touches and then uh, publish the image or like save that image in jpeg or png uh, and i do not use uh, any other third pa- uh, third party tools such as uh, uh photoshop or lightroom i just only do my entire processing from start to finish in pixel set only mm-hmm. so nice. that is that, that's about it and uh, i would like to show you guys like the recent image which i shot which i haven't posted anywhere so oh. okay yeah so this is it oh yeah the flaming star and tide poles which are shot tide poles yeah few months back uh um this is the first processing um, uh, attempt after so many days so i'm going to like do a uh, one more go on the processing of it and then i'll be able to post it so i do not post something like which i <laughs> don't like that much uh i later on like i post when i'm like satisfied satisfied with it so this is how like imaging from a hard terrace looks like and since the train goes uh, my rig and my house also shakes but yeah my i since i have to image i don't let that thing stop and i finish that my whatever target i have so, and uh, so do, yeah do you usually end up tossing away a lot of the images from shaking stars from the train going by or do you just leave them all in and so when i wasn't using auto guider uh, so i used to throw away many images like 40% of them but mm-hmm. after i got uh, the guiding setup i do not have to throw many images and like okay if i have like 50 images i'll i'll throw five images or like two three images not as many as i used to throw it before right so so, so the settings are blank? optimized yeah do you I like you blank to kind of scroll through them to see if you got any of the real shaky yeah 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 i put all the images on blink and like i see yeah. like what is there yeah so that is a cool way to even to find asteroids in a oh image. yeah yeah so sometimes i find uh, cool funny asteroids but i do annotate it and uh, see it is good to see okay you have uh, this asteroid here which is which everyone thought would be a star and it moves in another image but right. <laughs> in previous image it is static so Yeah, that is a cool thing so another image which i took when i was not using any tracker which was this so i shot uh, from a dslr and a 50 mm lens and uh, no tripod even no tripod i just kept my camera on on the ground only looking up in the sky and really? i shot like 30 images with 
five second exposures with a 50 mm uh, lens which was 1.4 mm. so i was pretty happy with the results which i got oh yeah nice work thank you bill and uh, this this was about it and uh, wow uh excellent my, excellent my presentation next, so my next yeah okay. i i like okay. this one last topic remaining which i like i share some insight and then we can do q and a's yeah uh, so that is like uh, my insights and my tips on collecting a good data like so to get a i believe like to get a good high quality astronomical image there are so many factors which have to work on your side to get it done so first of all like i, I believe like uh, good subs in good uh, good data out good data in good data out so if your subs are good if everything checks out then of course and you collect a lot of data like minimum i would say from a dark location minimum would be 3 to 4 hours to get a decent data so i believe that is important uh, and another thing would be like checking your gear checking your uh, collimation or if you're using refractor then no issues and then if you're using reflector or any other type of scope which requires collimation then collimation is the first thing which you need to get it right to get a decent image so if that is not done of course your stars are not going to be round and your objects are not going to be as sharp as they should be in the images which we see mostly on the internet taken by professional more pro people like who are more <laughs> awesome uh, than me in astro imaging and uh, data acquisition so i since i have a color camera right now uh, i plan to move on to like mono camera as well so sooner soon soon i'm going to get that and sho filters so even from my house i'll be able to sh- uh, take some good images even if the moon is out or uh, yeah stuff like that so is it in your area are they all switching to uh, led lights and moving yes. away from high pressure yeah see those leds yes. man those are killers yeah leds are like very bad so i have a question so yeah. you're in the southern hemisphere correct Oh uh, no, I'm in northern. Oh, you're in the northern. Oh, see, that was yes, something. Yes, yes. Okay, so you need to be further. Is all of it? Yeah. Okay, so you're above. That means you're above the equator. Yeah, little okay. bit above the equator, just not too off. My okay. Polaris from my house. It is in the ballpark of 18 to 21 degrees from my house. Okay. So yeah, 21 degrees is where I align the Polaris. In. Okay. Thank you for that. I always, I always wondered about that. And yeah. uh, so. you therefore then see many so what's not clear to me yet i imagine there are targets in the southern hemisphere that we don't see in the northern hemisphere or maybe this is kind of off topic but is a, yeah oh okay all right yeah so see and that's kind of what i wondered so if you're like right at the equator i wonder how much of the stuff you can get from the north and stuff you can get from the south yeah so uh, i see carina nebula which uh, from here okay, rises yeah. to like 10 to 15 degrees maximum Sometimes yeah, see, we, I don't get even, that at all. Yeah, even with that, like you can see, you cannot see large Magellanic cloud or small Magellanic cloud. Right. Uh, to see that, we can travel to southern part of India, and there are islands called Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So from there, you can see the both of those clouds, large and small Magellanic clouds, which I plan yeah. to do someday. <laughs> which plan to travel there and take those images. So even from there, how high do they get? Probably not too high. it is it gets like more than 30 to 45 degrees and i, I believe oh, okay. like even with that is sufficient if you don't have yeah, any pollution or that that is good enough yeah gets you above kind of the sky glow a little bit anyway yeah. maybe depending on what how dark you are yeah so yes. so what i'm hearing here is no one in india should be discouraged from jumping into the astrophotography uh hobby there are definitely challenges as as you um, very well articulated patient. yeah and patient <laughs> and and challenges yeah. around availability of equipment pricing and all that um but they 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 are uh they can be overcome yes. and um you know many people are having to deal with light pollution every day as well so even there uh, there are techniques and 
and like you say you image more towards the zenith when you can above a certain uh, uh, altitude I guess so yeah no uh, very cool and uh, I also liked how you you kind of went back around on your target so as your gear capability changed you went back and re-imaged them to try to see some comparison it seems before uh, the before and then now the current image so that that's very cool um, and it seems to be in Pix Insight. Were you doing some trial and error on how to set your, um, like in the noise reduction area and that? Were you, do you do trial and error to see what parameters work best for you? Or uh, maybe that's another another presentation. But uh, yeah. I think. I but think yeah, I can answer that for okay. you. Uh, so it depends on image to image, like not the same settings was every time identically on every target. So depending on the target which you shot, uh, the settings may vary and uh, you can get the uh, same results with different settings, but yeah, those settings vary from yeah. image to image. You know, I don't know, you know, I, everybody's experience is a little bit different, but I, I often think that this hobby is, is presents many opportunities for trial and error. Just kind of yeah. try stuff, you know? So, okay, here's kind of the standard believed way of doing something. Find out for yourself with, your gear and everything, uh, kind of what works for you, and do you, should you deviate a little bit to maybe optimize uh, the result or something like that? I, I that's one thing I like about is kind of the trial and error. So, uh, although one time I got very impatient and I quit, uh, <laughs> since, since then yeah. I'm a lot more uh, calm in that. Okay, you know, like Patrick, you said, when you have troubles at night, it's really not a lost night it's where you learn something. And exactly. then again, that's also uh, an important part of the hobby. So if I'm talking to somebody that's new, uh, just keep starting their journey, uh, a little bit of patience. And, uh, and uh, when you run into some challenges, they're great uh, learning opportunities. So don't get, uh, don't get discouraged. But uh, yeah, but man, I could, I could see the struggle with the, the pollution. So that really has to mess up seeing conditions transparency so you might have a clear night no clouds but with the pollution man your seeing condition just might be just terrible yeah so yeah that, that definitely takes patience so i have a flat roof here um over a, a section that we had added on and i was thinking okay do i try to image from up there if i'm up there i've taken out some of the buildings i get a little bit better field of view that's my problem in my backyard my time with a target for the field of view that I have is very limited with what you're dealing with, with vibration, with the trains and everything, I'm thinking now, sure, I should give it a shot, you know, and I should see what the experience is, how much vibration may I get? I mean, I don't have yeah. trains rolling by. I am not far from the San Francisco airport. And we used to have a, uh, a makeup table in our in our bedroom, my wife's. And when the big jets would take off the heavies, it would rattle things on that table. So you know that's you know that airport's like ten miles away. Uh, yeah. So, but based upon your experience and what you shared, I should really try to see if I can't get up on that roof and uh, try and do some imaging up there, and then immediately gain a better view of the sky. Uh, which yeah. make it, you know, I really don't want to travel 473 miles to go image <laughs> if, if I can do it yeah. locally. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's not so much the light pollution that scares me, although with the RGB, I mean, there's filters for your narrow band. And I, I know that Antalya has come out with a tri band filter uh, supposed to work with the uh, RGB. Uh, cutting down light pollution and also giving you a little bit more on the HA, hydrogen, HB, and that type of scale. So, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, this is what I love about these Astro Chats. You, we, I get insight and I get motivation from people that are dealing with challenges that I thought would right. block me. So vibration appears. While you might not like to have it, you can deal with it. Uh, effectively, it seems. Yes. Yeah. Or, Fan yeah. Fantastic. All right. Um, anything else before we wrap up? 
yeah any questions you, if you guys have for me uh, i would be happy to answer them yeah and uh, also if you have any social media links or even uh yeah. your link to your astro bin I'll, I'll put them in the video description so people can uh, uh can uh have access to those follow your journey absolutely i i'm i'm uh you know the other thing about these astro chats i feel like i've been dogging it people are doing a lot more than me <laughs> I, well i have an image since we were at gmars last month yeah but i'm not as i said i'm not going to complain about the weather because I, right. I don't have to deal with monsoons so yep, yep. Uh, yeah we've uh we've kind of had a a period here where uh, fortunately uh, we're getting some uh, rain, which is really needed here in this part of the uh, uh, oh, California. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think we're getting some today too. too. All right. Well, so I think uh, we're going to do a follow up uh, meeting down the road a little bit. Is that uh, you're open to that, right? And sure, sure. Yes, yes. I'm pretty much happy to talk about your your image processing, maybe a little bit more or other topics that uh, you'd yeah. like to share. But yes, I, yes. I, I think this has been very helpful. And if nothing else, um, hopefully beginners are watching these uh, Astro Chats and understanding how to get a journey going and how to progress up with it and how to deal with some of these challenges that you're going to have to uh, uh, deal with. Uh, but if you stick with it and you're passionate about it, I mean, your images were fantastic. Um, <clears throat> and so really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to join us. And, uh, other than that, I think we can close this thing up. So yeah. if you, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up as always, uh, like share and subscribe. I will put the email address in this video, so it'll be in front of you. I encourage others to join uh, and uh, share your story, share your experiences, and help all of us learn through your experiences. Uh, and uh, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. So, And uh, you should expect the Astro Chat series now that we've started again. Um, we're going to try to go weekly, but I'm, I have a feeling it's going to be every couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, we'll do what we can based upon the number of people that, uh, that volunteer. All right. I think that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Clear skies yeah. wherever you may be. Yes, guys, everyone. All right. Yeah. Good luck to you, guys. Bye-bye. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye.